The accuracy of an air rifle pellet is influenced by the weather, especially wind. Pellets come in all shapes and sizes. Some claim superior knockdown power, others penetration, others just look cool. But which ones are weatherproof? We've been sent out to see if we can find a nuisance squirrel while Darren works on a bit of kit we're going to play with later. No expense spared. Can you tell what it is yet? The hunting proves fruitless and with the nuts looking tempting, we retire to Darren's well-appointed range so we can see just what influence the wind has on our pellets. It doesn't matter how much you've shot or how good you think you are, you can always benefit from a bit of practice. And that's exactly what we're doing coming into the shed here. So we've set up a load of spinning targets and animal silhouette targets. And we're just going to while away half an hour, an hour whilst it's, the weather's absolutely horrendous and just see what we can do. And it's quite good in situations like this because we've got a side wind as well. So as the range goes further and further out, we've only got targets to about 35 yards. You can also play with your windage. So it really is a fantastic opportunity when you do have inclement weather, if you've got a facility like this, to learn exactly about your windages and your elevation shooting as well. Roy wants to see what difference a crosswind makes to two very different pellet designs. So at 35 we've got the wind coming in from right to left, so we'll just go off on the edge there. Okay, so we could actually see on that one exactly where we were. So we can see the wind's taken it over just past, so this time we will adjust to about here and down a touch. So at 35, it's not quite on that mill dot. So we're going to come a mill dot over, same height, mill dot over to allow for that wind. And there we go. So you can see that wind has really increased and pushed us over. So that is strengthening up. So that's with the Acupels. We'll just have a, a couple of goes on the spinner and see where we are on that. So the spinner is at just under 30 yards, or just on 30 yards, so we'll just account for that. So at 30, we should be able to aim directly at it, but this time we won't give it quite as much on the windage. And that was spot on. So we gave that a little bit less. Put another pellet through. We'll aim for the small spinner and just see where we are. So again, half the windage. So around about there. And we're on. We're going to change pellets now and see what effect that has. So we're going to change over to the Berman Pell. So we're going to change over to a basically a flat-headed pellet and see what sort of results that gives us with the wind that we've got and with the ranges that we're shooting at. We can all appreciate that a teardrop is more aerodynamic than a brick, but at what sort of ranges are the vermin pels going to start feeling the effects? Elevation again, one and a half on the mill. Yes! Right, okay, so we finally figured out where we were. So trying to shoot within the lull of the wind, we were about one and a half mil dots over to the right we were having to allow and we had to come a mil dot and a quarter up. So again, it was, that was definitely affected a lot more by the wind. So we'll just have a, a bit of a plink on the 30 yards at the spinners and see where we are on there. I'll oh, hit the bigger spinner to start with. That wind is really starting to kick in as well now. So that's dropping away even at 30. There we go. So, to even get at 30 yards, the wind's really kicking it in over now, and we had to just come up slightly. So we had to give it about half a mil dot of elevation, and we had to come over to the right by a mil dot as well. So with that wind, the varm impels were definitely being affected a lot more. So with those on a windy day, you really need to bring it in to 20 yards, really, I would say because otherwise you just don't know. With the Acupels, they're just giving us a little bit more consistency, a little bit more reliability when dealing with conditions like this. So I think the best thing to do now 
we'll go back and have a, a look at the smoke machine and just see exactly how they're affected in the wind tunnel and see what differences it creates. The AccuPel clearly outperforms the Vermin Pell in strong winds, but we want to see what Darren has in his laboratory. <laughs> Unfortunately, Roy shows him what he's got on his phone first, and it's not <laughs> holiday snaps. Right to the research centre, and our wind tunnel is complete, made from some straws, ply, a fan from a computer, and carcinogenic fumes. The, the trouble that we, we found when we were testing earlier, a normal air rifle pellet is just too small for the level of technology that we're using in here. Um, so I expertly crafted um, some larger replicas <laughs> of different shaped ammunition right. so we can do some airflow and, and just see, see how they behave in, in different winds. Excellent. And in here we've got, so this is pretty much going to be a representative of the sort of AccuPel shape, isn't it? Yep. You, re you reckon we should get some um, Quite good uh, results from this. Then. I don't know. Should we blow some smoke and see? Yeah, it's always good to blow smoke, isn't it? All right, come on then. Let's, <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. go. What a great job! In the vain hope of seeing any difference, but with the real possibility of a visit to A and E, Roy makes encouraging noises as we start the experiment. Look at that! Oh, that's beautiful. That's perfect, isn't it? I think I'm yeah. going to come out of retirement and get a job in Formula One. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they spend millions of pounds in Formula One? Exactly. Four pound ninety nine an, an hour form. in the shed. Look, we could we could be Formula One engineers. I like this. Here's a selection of angles and speeds for the rounded one. Now the pointy one. And lastly, the flat one. So, gentlemen, do you think it's served its purpose? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've, we're very well guessed. <laughs> no, but we had some fun doing it. If you have a dinky toy needing some aerodynamic research, we now have the technology.